What is up guys, we're back with another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about AMD's Radeon RX 9070, of course that is the non-XT version, and this card specifically which is ASRock's Steel Legend OC, so let's go ahead and take a look. Starting out with specifications, the Radeon RX 9070 is based on AMD's Navi 48 chip with 56 out of the 64 compute units enabled. This configuration will give you 3,584 stream processors, 112 AI accelerators, 56 RT accelerators, 224 TMUs, 128 ROPs, 64 megabytes of Infinity Cache, and 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 that runs across a 256-bit memory interface. The clock speeds are going to be a game clock of 2070 megahertz and a boost clock of 2520 megahertz. Now the Steel Legend OC card that we're taking a look at today does have a factory overclock, so the game clock is going to be set at 2210 megahertz with the boost clock being 2700 megahertz. Now, as we take a first look at the Steel Legend OC card, the first thing that really stands out is that this is an all white design card. Now we don't have a white PC, but the actual whole design, the shroud, the backplate, everything is gonna be all white. So if you did wanna match this with an all white build, it's gonna look excellent in there. Now, as far as size, I'll go ahead and put the official dimensions up on the screen like I always do. The shroud of the card is split between white and gray, which actually gives it a really good contrast. Embedded in the shroud are our three cooling fans. These are ASRock's striped ring fans, which have an outer frame that's connected to the fins. This design allows for more lateral intake for better airflow. The fans are clear as they have ARGB LEDs embedded in them. Looking at the card from the side, we can see that the rest of the cooling solution is made up of two heatsink stacks, which are connected by multiple heat pipes. On the side of the card that will show if you have a case window, you'll see a Steel Legend logo as well as a Radeon logo. Now, if we look closely at this side of the card, right in the center, you'll find your power connections, which include two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors. Right next to it is a small switch that will turn all of the LEDs on the card on or off, as well as a 3-pin addressable RGB header. The back of the card features a full cover metal backplate that features both an AMD Radeon logo and Steel Legend logo. Towards the end, there is a cutout for pass-through cooling. When it comes to connections, you're gonna get three DisplayPort 2.1a and a single HDMI 2.1b. As you can see, the card is slotted for two slots, but with the shroud, this is a 2.9 slot card, so definitely keep that in mind. When it comes to RGB lighting on the card, when you power your system on, all three fans are gonna light up with RGB lighting, and this looks excellent, especially if you do have your graphics card mounted vertically. On top of that, the Steel Legend logo on the side of the card is gonna light up, so you have quite a lot of RGB lighting here. When it comes to testing, we're gonna be testing this card, of course, in our graphics card test bench, which is made up of the following components.
We of course can't talk about the Radeon 9070 series without talking about AMD FSR4. Of course, this is the fourth generation of their upscaling technology and it's available on both the 9070 and 9070 XT. And essentially it's pretty easy to enable. I've seen some people have some issues with it, but all you do is go into the AMD driver software, you enable it, and then that option becomes available within the game if your game does support it. There are a ton of titles that will already support FSR 4 because FSR 4 will work on any title that supported FSR 3.1. So there are a ton of titles. We tested it in Horizon Zero Dawn at 4K. So at 4K without FSR 4, we got 91 FPS. We enabled FSR 4, but without any frame generation and we got 125 FPS. So a little bit of a bump. But if we did enable frame generation, we got 194 FPS, which means we essentially doubled our frame rate. So if you are looking to maybe, instead of playing at 1440p, you wanna play at 4K and you wanna get higher frame rates, you can enable FSR4. And like I said, at least my implementation, I didn't have any issues with it. Now, as we come to the end here, it's good to finally have another choice when it comes to buying a new graphics card. It's been all NVIDIA, and we actually thought we would see these cards released in January at CES, but that just did not happen. Now they're here, and they are definitely a viable option when it comes to buying a new graphics card. Now, this card specifically, of course, is the non-XT version, and I think overall, it's gonna be a great 1440p card. In our testing, we averaged around 137 FPS across our games at 1440p, which again, makes it a really solid 1440p card. And if you're gonna compare it to a couple other cards, it's about 15% faster than a 7900 GRE, which was not expected. We expected that with the XT version, but the not the non-XT version. So definitely nice to see that there. If we compare it to the 5070, it outperforms the 5070 in most scenarios. They kind of just trade blows depending on the game that you're playing. I would say this is the better choice just because it does have 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which again, is probably gonna give it better performance at 4K. And if you wanted to do any AI stuff, you typically need 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So you get that with this card. The 5070 does not have that. And at 4K, we averaged around 83 FPS. So again, if you did want to do over 60 FPS 4K gaming, you can definitely do it with this card. But I think overall, this is going to be a better 1440p card. We can't, of course, talk about this without talking about AMD's FSR4. Once you figure out how to enable it within AMD's driver software, it is pretty easy to toggle it on and then turn it on in your game. With frame generation and FSR4, you can essentially double your frame rate. So if you were gonna play at 4K and you wanted better FPS, you can enable FSR4. I really didn't have any issues when I was testing it and everything that supports FSR 3.1 will also support FSR4. So there are a bunch of titles that are already ready to go with FSR4. And like I said, I didn't have any issues implementing it. I seen people have issues but i at least in the games that i tested i didn't have any issues implementing it at all and when it comes to this specific card from uh asrock it, it is an excellent card it is their premier rx 9070 not so 9700 9070 and it has the all white design so if you're doing a white build it's going to look great we have all of that rgb lighting full cover metal backplate you have the nice cooling solution, which is actually very, very quiet. I was actually really surprised um, of how quiet this was. So this is gonna be a solid card. And of course you get that factory overclock, which will get you a, fr a few more frames in your games. Now, the big issue that I have with this card, and this is an AMD issue, is the pricing. It's only $50 difference. So I think most people won't even look at this card because for 50 bucks, you can just get the 9070 XT. The, this is the non-XT. So why just you know you should just spend the extra 50 bucks 
549 for the MSRP on this. And this card specifically is 639. That's the cheapest that I found it online. Currently, again, we do have like issues with availability and everything, but 639, which makes it a $90 premium. That's actually a pretty low premium compared to some of the Nvidia premiums that we've seen from AIBs. I think this is an excellent card. I just wish AMD would have priced these out $100 difference, not $50 difference, because it just doesn't make any sense to get a non-XT card if you can pay 50 bucks and get the XT version. But if you have any questions about AMD's Radeon RX 9070 or this card specifically, definitely leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.